<laughs> that was the stupidest movie. Yeah, who picked this film anyway? My brilliant husband. The review sounded interesting. Said it was a little weird, but worth seeing. A little weird. Well, we need to rewrite that review. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it didn't let on about that one scene, did it? No, how was I supposed to know they were going to show that? <laughs> <laughs> when I put my hand over his eyes, he tried to push it away. Yeah, but it wasn't so I could see the scene. It's because she had your hands over my nose and I couldn't breathe. <laughs> I just gave mine a shot in the ribs. Oh. Oh, but she didn't know it was going to backfire on her because I already had my hands covering my eyes. And as soon as she hit me in my ribs, my hand went down and I saw everything. Oh. <laughs> hey, man. We finally hired one. New secretary. Yep, she starts tomorrow. Oh, well, I hope we don't run this one off like it did the last one. <laughs> Funny guy, David, but I'm looking around and guess what? Nobody's laughing. That's right. Hey, Benny and Gerard saw the film and those guys loved it. You're kidding. That's what they told me. Catch you at lunch. Benny, Gerard, I heard you guys saw the film and liked it. I thought it was great. Me too. <laughs> You're joking, right? I mean, Ruben actually thinks that you liked it. We did. You thought otherwise? Well, yes. It was weird. But that's what we liked about it. Yeah, it got good at being weird. <laughs> I always thought you guys in IT were a little off base. But now, I know you are. Yes, you did. You hit me so hard, I should get four shots. Take it out. That wasn't a foul. Yes, it was. Our ball, take it out. All right, let's go. What's the ball? Okay, uh, last meeting, we briefly discussed our citywide outreach program. You see the budget on your sheet there. Would anyone like to comment on what we should do this year? Well, since we have the same budget as last year, why not do the booth at the Chamber of Commerce Business Expo again? Thousands of people came through there, and I think we made a good impression in the community. Yeah, it seemed to go well. Any other ideas? Well, we could sponsor our basketball camp. We've got some good players in the college department. We could pay them to run a camp for the week. Plus, my next-door neighbor is a sports anchor for Channel 8. I bet he'd do a story on us if we asked. All right, that's a new idea. Look, I think the main thing is we show the community we care. If we do the, uh, the business expo again or the basketball camp, they're both very positive and... Uh, we really can't go wrong. Hey. Hey. How'd the meeting go? It went okay. Did you decide on anything? Yes. That we'll decide next week. <laughs> well, did you say anything? No. <laughs> David, I thought you were going to tell them about your idea. Well, they're talking about a booth at the expo again or a basketball camp, you know, things like that. Well, it's hard to say anything. Then why do you even go to those meetings? Because I'm on the outreach committee. But if you have an idea and you don't say anything... Yeah, I know, I know. Well, you should at least tell it to them. Well, I will. Next meeting. The new secretary is on board, and now it's smooth sailing. Well, I hope we don't run this one off like it did the last. Still trying to be a funny guy, David? But I'm looking around, and guess what? Nobody's laughing. You got it. Besides, I didn't come in to chat. Just to make your day, I forgot to tell you about this yesterday. Listen to both ears. Emeka Odom, a leader in world missions and the president of the Nigerian Gospel Ministry, will be speaking this weekend in the evening service, live and in person. Mecca Odom, at your church. I love this guy. Mr. Odom has been instrumental in the native missionary movement throughout Africa, and will be speaking on the urgency to reach out for Jesus in these last days. Got you and Danielle, front row seats reserved. Just save one. She meets with the junior high girls and never misses it. Okay, then. Got you one of the bleachers. I'm really excited about seeing Mr. Odom. I read almost all of his books, and you know me, I'm not a big reader. <laughs> you gonna try and meet him? Well, I hadn't thought about it, but I'd love to talk to him. 
No, God used that man to open up my eyes to world evangelism. Well, you should go up afterwards and meet him. Tell him that. Encourage him. Yeah, I will. Well, I'll try. You meeting Reuben and Cindy there? No, they said they can't make it. Cindy's father is having his 60th birthday, so they gotta go to that. Hey, we got a flick to watch tonight? My brothers and sisters in Christ, time is running out. Over 150,000 people die in this world every day. And most of them die not knowing Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. This is so tragic, and it is heartbreaking. As believers in Christ, we need to make this our number one concern, to reach people all around us with the gospel. In parts of Africa, missionaries are tortured and killed for trying to tell their enemies about Jesus. They don't want them to die without knowing the Lord. In America, we have a hard time telling our loved ones about him. It does not seem to be a concern here. I am afraid that we have become too comfortable here in this country. We are too much in the world, and it has become attractive to us. We want entertainment. We don't seem to be too concerned about lost souls and dying people, but Jesus is. That is why he came. Thank you, brother. Thank you, my brother. Hello, Mr. Odom. David Williams. David. I was really challenged by what you had to say tonight. I agree with you wholeheartedly, and I want to help. Well, you are kind. The Lord be praised. I know you must be really busy, and I was wondering if you had time to talk. I know you don't know me, but I really want to be involved in evangelism. Could I buy you a cup of coffee or tea, or at least sit down with you and talk for a short time? I normally don't attend this church. I live on the other side of the city. Well, I have a meeting with these brothers over here, but it won't take long. Now, if you can wait, there's a place at my hotel. We can speak there. I want to see people come to the Lord. I mean, really come to know Jesus. I'm on the outreach committee with my church. My wife and I support two native missionaries through your ministry in Africa, mm -hmm. but we want to do more. I always feel like I should quit my job and just move overseas. But we don't need you in Africa, my friend. The Lord needs you right here. There's a very big mission field here in this country. There are plenty of churches here. In some places, there's one in every corner. I've traveled your country on and off for about three years now. I've spoken in many churches, all denominations, and I sense one main thing in all of them. Most people here do not know how the devil attacks and deceives them in this country. What do you mean? I finished writing a book. I have some copies here. I'll give you one. If you are interested, you can read. Thank you. You're welcome. The most powerful church in America. Why is it called that? David, my friend, I fear for the church in this country. It is in very great danger. Danger? What kind of danger? There's got a lot of information in here on the influence of the movies and media. Yeah, I read half that book last night, and I feel like I'm lost. David, you're the most committed Christian I know. 
Danielle, I'm sorry. I told the Lord last night I was sorry, too. I let ungodly entertainment creep into my life, and I've been deceived. Hold on, now, whoa. What are you talking about? Hey, let me see that for a second. Here, read that paragraph right there. thought of it at all. Did he talk about this during a sermon? No. Danielle, how many Christians does that describe? You must be the new secretary, David Williams. Hi, I'm Monique. Nice to meet you, Mr. Williams. Just call me David. Is Ruben in his office? No, he just went to the break room. Thanks. Hey, welcome to the team. Thank you. David, what's up? You got a minute? Sure. I met Odom really hit it last night. Sorry, miss. Tell me about it. Time is running out. <laughs> he must have said that about a dozen times. And about 200 people work in this building, and I've been here five years. I've talked to what? Maybe four people about the Lord? I mean, that's not even one a year. What's wrong with me, man? I know you can't force it on people, but I should be sharing more. There's nothing wrong with you or me. That's the problem. We're both Christians. Have great wives, a good job, nice place to live in, good churches, a little money in the bank. We got it made. Well, I don't feel like I got it made. I want to do more. You always been into it, man. I know who needs to wake up. It's just not in our heart like it is, Mr. Odoms. I mean, it's not about feeling guilty or convicted. It's just not in our heart. He ended the message with Psalm 1611. In the presence of God is fullness of joy. I mean, now think about that for a second. Isn't that what everyone wants? In the presence of God is fullness of joy. You'd think we'd spend 24 hours a day with Jesus. Then why don't we? Because we got a good job, great wives, nice home, good church, money in the bank. We got it made. <laughs> Before we decide what we'll do for our citywide outreach, David asked if he uh, could say a few words. David? Thank you. I've had an idea for some time now, and I wanted to bring it up last meeting, but didn't. Anyway, this past weekend, I heard a missionary from Africa speak, and then I started reading a book he wrote. This man thinks the most powerful force on the planet is the entertainment industry. It impacts people like nothing else. A famous film producer in Hollywood said this, the church, which used to be all powerful, has been taken over by film. Hmm. What the producer is saying is that motion picture films are making a greater impact in this world than the church. So what's the point, David? The point is, if we really want to reach people for Christ, we should make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> we should look to the media and entertainment as a way to communicate the message. Well, what are you suggesting, then? I'm suggesting that we take money from the outreach fund and consider doing something that is media-related this year. Like what? Well, I, I don't know yet. David, you have ideas, but you never seem to have a plan. <laughs> God's the one with the plan. We're just trying to figure out what it is. And I know he wants us to proclaim the gospel. Look, our pastor preaches a good sermon every week, but it gets lost compared to the hours of TV and movies the congregation watches. Well, we can't control what people do for their entertainment. But we have to try to reach them. And entertainment is where they are at. I say we do the business expo again. We reached a lot of people last time. Or the basketball camp. Please, let's pray about this idea with the media. I really think this could be a big thing here. I don't want to prolong this decision, but with this new suggestion on the table, let's just wait until the next meeting, and then we'll decide. We'll add David's idea to the list.
Danielle, can you read this for a second? Sure. Wait, that's an A? How can you tell who gets an A and who gets a B? David, when you're a school teacher in the first grade, everyone's art projects get an A. Oh, well, you learn something new every day. Take a look at what he says about the media test. The media test? Yeah, just read it when you can, you'll see. Let me know what you think. I think we should try this. Hey, man. The movie starts tomorrow night at 8.15. So we me stay around 7.45. Don't be late. Which movie? <laughs> Explosion. Uh, sorry, Ruben. Can't make that one. What? There's supposed to be more special effects in this movie than there's dialogue. Well, then it shouldn't take you too long to tell me about it. David, you were talking about a mega, mega movie here, and you don't want to see it. Sorry. Gonna pass. Are you sick or something? No. Having trouble with the little lady? <laughs> no. Then what is it, then? We have a streak of saying the last 37 moves together. The four of us. We're supposed to be brooking Joe DiMaggio's 56 game hitting streak with going to the movies, remember? Joe's streak will survive. You sure? Yeah. I'm sure. It won't be the same without you. Thanks. Okay, um. If you change your mind, you know where we'll be. The media impacts your life in a greater way than you ever realize. I'll give you an example. Have you ever noticed the commercials on television? When the commercials come on, do you stop what you're doing and shout, shh, be quiet, the commercials are on, I want to watch them. Well, of course not. When the commercials come on, you relax, get something to eat, take a break, but pay very little attention to them. Yet advertisers are paying big money for those commercials. So the question you have to ask yourself is this. Why would an advertiser pay a great deal of money to air a commercial on television that most people don't really watch? The answer is simple. Because they know how much television influences lives. And if the commercials that we supposedly do not watch influence our life, what do you think happens with the programs we do watch? Oh, television is very powerful. Most of it has zero to do with the Lord. You know, what if we had a commercial on TV telling people about Jesus? <laughs> yeah, like we could afford that. <laughs> You're listening to 93.5, The King Station, your number one source for the best in Christian music. News is coming up next, so stay with us. I'm Randy Stone. I'll be here tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. And no matter what you do, lift up the name of Jesus. David, what's up? How's it going? Going great. How are you doing? Doing good. Looks like you enjoy your job. No, this ain't no job. I love it too much. Now you? You've got a job. <laughs> I hear you. Hey, you got a minute? I want to run something by you. Last night, an idea came to mind. What if we were to present the gospel on every radio station in this city at the same time? At the same time? Yeah. Do you have any idea how many radio stations are in the city? Yeah. There's 16 rated stations. So if we had an ad on all 16 stations at the same time, we'd reach all the people in the city listening at that moment. Well, that's right. But I'm not sure every station plays a break at the same time. Was well, there any way to find out? Any idea how much that would cost? Yeah, I've got all the rate cards. I can do the research and have you something on Monday. You know, it's not a sin to turn that thing on. Nobody said it was. You know, we used to sit here and watch TV shows and movies every night, but uh, now we don't watch anything. 
You could read a book. Yeah, but I like to watch things. So watch something. Just find a program that's more edifying or redeeming and not corrupt like he talks about in the book. Find a Christian channel. Mm, but the shows in Christian TV are mostly preaching. I want something that's entertaining. <laughs> yeah, almost all the TV shows and movies are godless. Mr. Odom is trying to make that point. That these programs affect our lives a lot more than we realize. And so it makes him wonder. Wonder what? If we're really Christians at all. All because we watch movies? No. He says, a Christian should be interested in the things of the Lord not the things of the world. The movies of the world are Christless, and yet most Christians don't even recognize it. Mr. Odom asks, well, why is that? He then says, well, maybe it's because Jesus really isn't in them to realize it. That sounds pretty hard and judgmental, David. Yeah, it does. What if he's right? Then that's pretty scary. That's very scary. How would you like to live your whole life thinking that you were saved? And then when he died, you really weren't. Seven movies in a row and you broke the streak? No, no, no. I didn't break the streak. For the record, David broke the streak. That bum. <laughs> <laughs> we need to put him on a popcorn restriction for that. <laughs> well, he's got to go see Explosion, that's for sure. Yes, he does. 14 stations run a 60 second ad at 11.59, just before noon. That's your best saturation point if you want all of your spots to hit at the same time. Okay, 14 stations run the ad. That means two don't. The other two run breaks at 11.54. One of them is ours, so we could easily get that switched. Which leaves one station. Which leaves one problem. What do you mean? 104.1. They call themselves The One. What about them? Well, first, they're the largest station in the city by far, not even close. Second, they're not too Christian friendly, if you know what I mean. So what you're saying is that we could probably get an ad on all these other stations, except for the biggest one. That's right. Speaking of one, I gotta be on the air in one minute. Okay, thanks, Randy, for all your help. I just need to get that one station that... Charlie will never do it. Who's Charlie? The station manager. We'll see you. I'm sorry, we can't do it for you at that time. Like I said, we don't have a break scheduled at 11.59. But it has to run at that specific time. Can't you make an exception? I just asked Charlie, the answer was no. Well, can I speak with Charlie for a moment then? Charlie's very busy, sir, I'm sorry. Is there something else I could help you with? No. Thank you. Have a nice day. But they can. You can run an ad anytime you want. You sure? Absolutely. Well, that's good to hear. Look, with Charlie running the show, the issue is not getting the time slot you want. The issue is just getting on there. Well, I might try again later. Thanks, Randy. All right, keep me posted. I will. Well, look who it is. What can I get for you today, gentlemen? Let me get the small veggie pizza, Sean. Throw in as many vegetables as you got. Lots of veggies. I got it. Turkey and cheese on whole wheat. I wrote it down before you said it. <laughs> I'll try the pizza medium, but put meat on mine. Sausage, pepperoni, a cow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some real food. No problem. I'll take what Ruben ordered. Exact same thing. You got it. Thanks, lads. 
You know, when we were at the movies the other night, most people get popcorn, but this guy, a steak sandwich. Ooh, that sounds good. Gotta have onions and peppers on it, though. Hey, I had red and green peppers on it. Yeah, but it costs like 20 bucks. Ah, uh, no, that doesn't sound good. You don't mess around, do you, Benny? No, sir. If the movie's no good, at least I can enjoy a meal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave. Dave, Dave. Heard you broke the streak. Yeah. Well, you gotta go see Explosion. Man, the special effects in that movie will blow your mind. How do you think they do that stuff? I watched a short clip online on how they did that last scene. It said it cost $10 million just to do that one part. Hello again. Stephanie, I was here yesterday, David Williams. Yes, Mr. Williams, how can I help you? Well, I'm back because I'd like to run a spot on your radio station at a special time, 11.59, like I told you before. And like I told you, we don't run a spot at that time. Right, but I found out that you could. So, do you think that I can speak with Charlie? It'll just be a moment. I promise I won't take much of his time. Charlie, this is David Williams. Charlie Summers, what can I do for you? Hello. It's nice to meet you. I'm sorry to bother you, ma'am. I know you don't run an ad at 11.59 a.m., but I understand that you could. I was hoping you could make an exception for the spot I want to run. And why is that time so important? It's just a timely ad that has to run then. What kind of spot is it? It's an inspirational message. Religious. Christian. We don't run anything religious here. But it isn't religious. You just said it was. Well, it isn't religious, but maybe it is in the sense you're thinking. Uh, sorry, I can't help you. I'll pay the fair rate. The answer is no. Charlene Summers. Charlie. She's been in radio her whole life. Her husband died 10 years ago of a heart attack, left everything to her. She hasn't missed a beat. As a matter of fact, her ratings are as high as they've ever been. She seemed pretty strong-willed. Oh, that's putting it mildly. I met her a few times at media functions around town. She's very strong-willed. I think you're gonna have to settle for 15 stations. No, we need to be on that one. There's gotta be a way. Well, there's always a way. Let's call more of this. Hey, we don't pay overtime here, you know. <laughs> I just finished this, come take a look. Best month we've ever had, and we still have a few more spots left to sell. Good job, Stephanie. <laughs> Thank you. And I would have had one of those spots sold, but you said no. What? That religious guy today. I have never seen you turn down money before, especially for an ad. I don't need his ad. But if he's got the money, what's the big deal? We don't want that propaganda on our station. Have a good evening. Good night. OK, man. The movie starts Friday at 7.05. So close up shop early when we meet you at 6.45. And it's the downtown theater this time. The one in the mall doesn't happen. Sorry, Ruben. Sorry, Ruben, what? Can't make it. Did I walk into the wrong office? This is David Williams, right? This is the right place. Because I thought I heard him say can't make it. You heard right. So why can't you make it? I just can't. There's got to be a reason. I'm sorry, Reuben. I, I just can't. David, what gifts? <laughs> Nothing. I'm sorry, Reuben. OK, uh, I'll catch you later, all right? See ya. I would like to propose that we take the money from the outreach budget and place a 60-second radio ad announcing the gospel on all 16 radio stations in the city. At the end of the announcement, we will give a phone number that people can call. We will run these ads all at the exact same time, at 11.59 a.m. on any day during the week. We can run an ad on 15 of the 16 stations. The only station that doesn't run an ad at that time is 104.1, who happens to be the largest station, so it's important that we get them too. Have you checked the cost on this? Yes. The cost of running an ad at the desired time slot on 15 stations 
comes to $1,575. For one 60-second advertisement? Well, yes, but that's a one-minute ad on 15 stations. 104.1 charges $300 to run an ad at 11.54, which is when they run their break. So the total would be $1,875 if we ran an ad on every station. But the key here is to try to get them to air our ad at the exact time as all the others. That way, regardless of what station they're listening to, they'll hear the gospel. Or turn the dial. But the gospel will be on every station, so no matter where they turn, they'll hear it. Then they'll just turn it off. Well, that's always an option. Look, I know the program director at 93.5, and he has told me about all the calls that they receive. Their station is definitely reaching people. I like their station. I listen to it a lot during the day myself. They have a good ministry. I think this is a great way to share the gospel with the masses in the city. It sounds like a great way to waste a lot of money to me. 1800 bucks in 60 seconds? Plus, not everybody listens to the radio. Our research showed that a great majority of the people in this city have a radio on at various times during the day. To translate that into numbers for you, it could mean over half a million people would hear the gospel with that one minute ad. So what do you think? Sounds like a plan to me. So they're gonna vote next week? Yeah. You think they're gonna go for it? Oh, I hope so. I felt really good about it. Well, you seem pretty excited. Yeah, well, maybe the Lord's gonna allow this to happen. Here you go. Thank you. Well, I can tell you did this and not Reuben because there's not one misspelled word on the first page. I heard that. He wanted to see you for a minute. Thanks. Da Bede. Do you have a new guy over there in research helping you these days? No, why? Because that report in your hands is the best work I've seen you do. Something's up. How about the guys in research carry this company and always have? Ha. How about the guys in sales and want to keep the guys in research and business? I agree with that. Seriously, David, that's some good work. You did a great job. Thanks. Yeah, things have been coming to me a little easier lately. What do you mean? I don't know. I guess you could say I've been less distracted. Well, whatever you're doing is helping. Thanks. I'll see you later. By the way, the film me and the missus caught on Friday. <laughs> you did the right thing. It was awful. Benny and Gerard said they loved it. Hey, Monique, I'm doing a little research on radio stations. What station is that? The one. Do you have it on most of the day? Yeah, it's always on. Thanks for the info. Well, hello, Jerry. Surprised to see you here today. The golf course closed. As a matter of fact, I'm on my way there right now, so I only have a minute. Well, look, sit down, sit down. What's on your mind? Look, I think we need to get David Williams off the committee. He's a nice guy, but he's going in a different direction than we are, you know, wanting to do these radio ads. David means well. I know. He's reading a book by some guy from Africa, and now he's an expert on evangelism. <laughs> Why don't you have a talk with him? See if he can find another committee to spend his energy on. Well, I don't know if I could do that. Why not? You're the chairman of the committee. He wants to spend all of our budget on something that's gonna fly by in 60 seconds. I mean, come on. Thousands of people will come by our booth over the three days at the expo. It's a no-brainer and you know it. Let's just vote on our next meeting. <laughs> okay. But it shouldn't have gotten this far. I'd like to offer you $350 to air my ad on your station just once during that time slot. $350? Yes, I understand you normally charge $300, but I have limited funds. Do you know how much this station billed last year? We don't need your $350. I'm not selling anything with it. Doesn't matter. But you have the largest station in the city with the most listeners. And I plan to keep it that way. I know what the people want, and I give it to them. 
Yes, but what people want most of the time is the exact opposite of what they really need. I suppose they really need to hear your religious message. Well, yes. Not on my station. Okay. About $400. No deal. <laughs> Miss Summers, what is it going to take to run my ad on your station at that time slot? This is really important to you, isn't it, Mr. Williams? Yes, ma'am, it is. You want to run your religious ad on my station at one minute before noon. That's right. Okay, I'll let you run your ad. Thank you, it's very kind of you. For $1,500. What? Charlie, cash. Please be reasonable, Miss Summers. I am. I don't want your religious ad on my station. So if it's that important to you, it will be 15 $100 bills in advance. Have a nice day, Mr. Williams. She is crazy. Well, that's what she said. You did tell her no. I didn't tell her anything. Well, it's obvious she doesn't want the gospel on her station. Well, all the more reason why we need to be on there. If you're not thinking about airing that ad for $1,500. I don't know what I'm thinking. Even if you are, how are you going to come up with the money? Well, I was hoping that the average committee would see the importance of it and agree to it. David, you don't even know if they're going to vote to do it, and now you have to tell them this? There you are. Hey, Sean. Thank you. Hey, Sean, you got that radio on all day? All day. What station do you have it on? It's always on the one. I used to play me Irish music, but the customers didn't appreciate it. You're a good man, Sean. See ya. Bye, David. Hi. What can I get for you? you guys go to church here? What do you want to know? Well, I see you playing ball on our grounds. Just wondering. He used to. Does that mean we can't play here anymore? No, you can play here. What's your name? Justin. Where do you live, Justin? This week or last week? <laughs> <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Last week, my mom. This week, my dad. So your parents are divorced? No. They love each other so much that they live in separate houses. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. All right, let's go, guys. We're going to do a secret ballot. You vote for what you'd like to do. We've got the business expo, the basketball camp, or the radio ads. I would ask that you just mark one. Don't put your name on the paper. Fold them once and then uh, pass them in. Expo again. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I feel like I just lost an election. Well, you got two votes, so someone in that room saw it your way. And you tried. What else can you do? Help set up a booth at the Business Expo again, I guess. the weekend. Hey, man, I, um, uh, I got some tragic news about someone you know. What happened? It was in a bulletin yesterday morning. I'm sorry, man. 
The report said he was trying to witness to a group of fanatics, and they beat him to death right there in the middle of broad daylight. He was trying to tell his enemies about Jesus. Where was this? Northern Nigeria. I'm sorry. I just heard Mr. Odom speak at a church not too long ago. Yeah, I saw where he was coming. I even had a chance to talk with him that night for a while. He thought the church in America was in great danger. Danger? What kind of danger? Well, we were sitting there in his hotel, and he started telling me how he thought the devil was deceiving the people in America. David, when you drove up tonight, did you notice the church across from the hotel? Church? Right across from the hotel. I'm sorry, I didn't. It had a big sign. You must have seen it. All I noticed was a movie theater. Yes, that is it. The big church. <laughs> but it was just a movie theater. That, my friend, is the most powerful church in America. It's a place where thousands go every week for fellowship. I don't understand. The enemy is using the movie theater and other media to accomplish his purpose. I'm still quite not following you. Let me explain. There's nothing sinful about a movie theater, a television, or radio. These are all great inventions. What can be sinful, though, is the content presented by them. In America, you have many Christians who go to the theater, but they do not use discernment about what the devil is doing to them. So what do you call it the most powerful church in America? I will give you an example and show you how powerful the movie theater is in this country. Now, what time does your church meet on the weekend? Sunday morning. Let's say I go to your church and preach the morning sermon. Halfway through the sermon, I curse the name of Jesus, or as some would say, I use the Lord's name in vain. Will that not wake up your congregation? So then I preach a little more, and I curse his name again. How would they react to that? Then I preach a little more, and I curse his name again. Would the people not be upset? Then I bring up a young couple on the platform, and they start to kiss and take their clothes off right there in church on a Sunday morning. How long do you think your congregation will allow this to go on? Would they not say, this is the most awful thing, to curse the name of Jesus in church and to have them take off their clothes here in front of everyone? Would they not be appalled? Would they not yell out, stop it? You cannot do this in this place. But yet, I say, 12 hours earlier, on Saturday night, in a movie theater, when this exact same thing occurs, it is entertainment? My friend, something is wrong. We must make up our mind. It is either entertainment Saturday night in the theater and entertainment Sunday morning in church, or it is most sinful. Sunday morning in church and most sinful Saturday night in the theater. This is why I say the movie theater is the most powerful church in America. It's the only place where Christians go to hear the name of Jesus Christ used as a swear word and to watch nakedness and yet pay their money to be entertained. Never thought of it like that before. I say this trembling, David. Most people who go to church in America know not Jesus. The Bible says, in the last days, men will become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Is this not the case in America now? Ask yourself, would I go to the movie theater to hear my name cursed? Then why go to the theater to hear his name cursed? David, would you go to the theater 
to see your daughter naked on the screen? So why go see someone else's daughter naked on the screen? It's just great sinfulness in the eyes of God. I don't know what to say. What can we do? We must try and turn this all around. Use the movie theater for Jesus. We need dramatic programming on television for the Lord. Use radio to tell others the gospel. Satan does not want any of this to happen and will work to stop anyone who tries to change it. So beware. I understand. The media has the power in this country, David. The airwaves, the movies, the music. It is how the enemy is working. Just look around you and observe what really moves the people and influences their lives. Is it not entertainment and the media? They control the people. They have the power of the air. Oh. Depart from me, Lord, for I'm a sinful man. Danielle and I used to go to the theater almost every weekend. We also watched a lot of movies during the week. I never thought about any of this. We've all become very desensitized. A few important things he said to me. The world and Jesus are always 180 degrees apart. Always. Hollywood is of the world, and yet this is our source of entertainment. Second, he said it's not a sin to watch a movie. The issue is what's the message. It's either for the Lord or against him. It's either going to build you up or tear you down. It's either going to corrupt you or edify you. It's one or the other. And why not choose the godly? And if the godly is not available, you choose nothing at all. I hear you. One more important thing he said. If you turn away from ungodly movies and media, that doesn't make you right with the Lord. That can just be a work of the flesh. He said we must turn to the Lord first. And the Spirit of God will help you turn from these ungodly movies and influences. It's always got to start with the Lord. He needs to be the Lord of our entertainment choices. That man was killed for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm having a hard time giving up movies that curse his name. of a Christian am I? You know, just think, if everyone who went to church in this country had decided not to watch any more movies that cursed his name, or had any sort of nudity in it, or any vulgar language, just think how that would affect the entertainment being offered by Hollywood. That, that would start a revolution. Maybe it's time we started one. Must try and turn this all around. Use the movie theater for Jesus. We need dramatic programming on television for the Lord. Use radio to tell others the gospel. Satan does not want any of this to happen and will work to stop anyone who tries to change it. Use radio to tell others the gospel. Use radio to tell others the gospel. Use radio to tell others the gospel. I need to do this. What? Put the gospel on all those radio stations. Think of all the people who will hear about Christ. I agree, but how are you gonna pay the cost? Well, we have some money. But that's our savings. Well, what are we saving it for so we can buy something that we don't need? David, there's nothing wrong with having a savings. I know, I'm not saying that. I just can't sit around and do nothing. Look, 
If the Lord wants you to do this, then he'll provide a way. He'll get you the money. Maybe he already has. It's sitting in our savings account. Why don't you pray and ask God for some clear direction? Oh, I did last night, and I feel he wants me to do this. Okay, well then he'll provide a way. Just keep listening, you'll know. We'll know. Why don't you ask the outreach committee if they want to help you with the cost? <laughs> well, the worst they can say is no. Okay, man. The wife wants to catch some new love story coming this Friday. It starts at 8.05, so we'll meet you there around 7.40. Don't be late. Sorry, Ruben. Can't make it. Not again. Let's have a cookout instead. We'll invite over another couple. We got a new game called Guess What? It's kind of like charades. It'll be a blast. Guys versus the girls. What do you think? Sounds fine, but we're already planning on going to the movie. We'll do that another night. I'm also thinking about starting a movie ministry at my church. Uh, we'd show a movie uh, once a month on a Friday night. Uh, you could start one at your church. I'll help you out with it. Yeah, I guess, but what's up? Why won't you go to the movies with us? This is three times in a row now. Sorry, my friend. Yeah, but what's the deal? This ain't like you. You and I have been friends for a long time. And nothing's gonna change that. I just can't go to these movies anymore. How come? You're trying to eliminate the voice of the world and pay more attention to the word of God. He said that they made a decision not to go to films that used the Lord's name in vain or had any nudity in them or even bad language. That's almost all of them. Yeah, I know. And they're not reading the mainstream media as much or letting it dictate the way they think about issues and things. David says that the media is almost always preaching the opposite of what the Bible says anyway. He's right about that. I didn't even know they were doing this. He also said that it's really made a difference, that their minds are cleared up a lot and they're more sensitive to the things of the Lord now. David wants to start a movie ministry. Instead of going to the theater on Friday nights, we'll show a Christian film once a month at the church on a Friday night. He wants to know if we will help. I said I would. Me too. I want to help too. You know, David is one of my best friends, but he's always been more to Jesus to me. And I've always been more to movies to him. I'm sorry. I should have been a much better man than that. In that book David was telling me, Mr. Odom thinks that for most people, entertainment is that God and not Jesus. And that there's a quick test that we could take. What type of test? He said, for one week, don't watch any movies or television. Don't listen to the radio or any music. Don't even get on the internet or read magazines and newspapers. In other words, completely eliminate all types of media and worldly entertainment from your life for one week. Okay. And then the next week, go back to using the media like you normally would, but this time, you don't pray, you don't go to church, you don't read the Bible, you don't even speak about the Lord to anyone, and you do that for one week. Okay. Now here's the test question. After those two weeks, ask yourself and be completely honest. What did you miss more? And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. And nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. Shall see their bodies.
Hey, Justin, you got a minute? We're playing, man. I just need a minute. All you guys, just stop what you're doing. A week from Friday, we're going to be showing a movie at our church. Actually, the Fellowship Hall, that building right over there. I'd like to invite you guys to come and see it. It's free. Why, you got a movie theater in there? No, but we got a big screen and a good sound system. See, it's about 150 people. It'll feel just like a movie theater. What's the movie? It's an action-packed thriller, guaranteed to keep you on the edge of your seats. Yeah, edge of our seats to leave. <laughs> no thanks, man. All right, you're right. It's, uh, it's not an action film. It's actually a drama. But you'll like it. Not interested. Hey, Justin. Sorry to hear that your parents are divorced and that you have to go back and forth from house to house. That must be really tough. Maybe that's the case with some of the other guys as well. But if you come see this movie next week, I guarantee the message in this film will help you out in your situation. I guarantee it. Just think about it. Eight o'clock. Well, some of the ladies have volunteered to work the booth at the expo. I think it would be a good idea if we showed up for a little while to help out. Here's a sheet that uh, notes the times the ladies have indicated they'll be there. Take a look at it and uh, see if you can fit in an hour or two. While you're doing that, uh, David has asked for a minute so he could uh, make an announcement. It's all yours. Thank you. I was reading the book of Revelation and something jumped off the page at me. It was a truth I had never seen before. I just want to let you know that I'm planning on going ahead with a radio outreach and I felt like the urgency of this was confirmed in my heart even more from what I read. In Revelation chapter 11, we read about the two witnesses who will be on the earth during the tribulation prophesying for 1260 days. After this time, they will be killed. And the Bible says in verse eight, that their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. And then in verse nine, it says that the people and the nations will see their dead bodies for three and a half days. Now, you could read over that and not think anything about it. In fact, I went to a seminary library and I looked up that passage in every commentary I could find, written in the early 1900s or before, and no one could explain those verses. So what are you getting at? It says that all the people and the nations will see the dead bodies of the two witnesses lying in the street. Now, how could that happen before 1950? They couldn't. But around 1950, TV started popping up in homes. And today, through TV and the internet, you can see anything you want in the whole world live as it happens. Do you see how significant this is? The technology that has exploded all around us is actually a sign of the end times. I am convinced that we are living in the last days before the return of Christ. And it is the utmost urgency that we share the gospel as much as we can with whoever we can and however we can. And that is key here. People have to hear the gospel for even a chance to be saved. So why are you telling us this? I wanted to see if we could use any of the leftover funds from the citywide outreach for the radio ads. I was hoping that there would be some. I think we've pretty much used up the budget with the uh, booth construction, the fees, all the information we'll be handing out. I don't think we'll have anything left. Could we possibly pull from another fund then? I doubt it. This is the only money designated for this type of outrage. Okay. I see. Well, I appreciate any prayers for the radio ads. I'll let you know when we're going to air them. David. David, have you ever owned your own company? No, Jerry, I haven't. I can tell. I know you mean well wanting to do these radio ads, and if you want to waste your money, that's your choice. But it's not good business. But it could be good ministry. The Expo is both practical and personable, and we get to meet people face to face. If you do those radio ads, I bet you won't get one phone call, not a single one. And they're gonna cost, what, 18, 1900 bucks? That's a lot of money to waste for absolutely nothing, don't you think? I'm just trying to help. Have a good evening. No, Jerry, you're mistaken. 
it's going to cost three thousand and seventy-five bucks. Now that's a lot of money for absolutely nothing. Danielle? Hmm. I wanted to let you know that I've been praying about this. I mean, really praying about this. The Lord didn't allow me to meet Mr. Odom for no reason. I asked the committee, even though I didn't feel at peace about asking them anyway. In fact, I don't have peace about asking anybody. I know it's a lot of money if we were to pay for these ads out of our own savings. I told the Lord about it, and I've been waiting for him to provide, but so far nothing's happened. It makes me think that he wants me to pay for this. So, could you please at least pray about it and see if you have peace? If you don't, then we don't do anything. But at least pray about it, okay? Okay. Thanks. I love you. I love you too. Hey, Randy, have you prepared those music reviews for this weekend? Oh, Becky, I'm sorry, I forgot. You need me to do them? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. Oh, and uh, what about those movie reviews? I haven't seen them yet either. I canceled them. Canceled them? They've always done really well for us. Yeah, I know. I canceled because I can't do them anymore. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. We're gonna start doing reviews for Christian books until I can find some Christian movies. Okay. Sorry I didn't tell you. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for helping me. Sure. We caught the Rose Tower over the weekend. Didn't it have Marla Downing in it? Oh, yeah. In fact, it had a whole lot of Marla Downing in it. <laughs> Did you catch it, Ruben? No, I didn't. How about you, David? No. What is happening to you guys? You're slipping on seeing your movies. I think every man in our Bible study group saw it. Mm -hmm. Did it show any nudity? What do you mean? You know what I mean. What are you, the censor board? <laughs> no. Did it? A little. A little, like one scene? A couple, maybe three? You guys have a problem with that? Wait, are we under an investigation here or something? No. Then what gives? Come on, guys, you know what I'm getting at. We're all Christians here. I mean, do you think it's right that we go see movies that have a woman taking off her clothes on the big screen? Are you implying that we're not Christians if we do? I'm just asking if it's right. I'm out of here. Yeah, me too. Guys, guys, wait, wait, wait. What if that woman up on the screen was not Marla Downing? What if that woman was our mother? Or our sister? Or our daughter? Or our wife? I would like to say a brief word to you about the enemy. Satan has one goal for you. He wants you to live your life without Jesus. He does not care what you do, just as long as you do it without Christ. Exclude Jesus from your daily life, from your entertainment choices, from the work you do. Keep Jesus out. This is the agenda of the devil. You see, the devil knows that in order for people to spend eternity in heaven, they must have Christ in their life before they die. How do they get Christ? By believing the gospel. Before people can believe the gospel, they must first hear it. The devil does not want this to happen, so he will do whatever he can to distract anyone from first sharing the gospel, second from hearing it, and finally from believing it. I had a little deal today with Benny and Gerard. What happened? Well, we were at lunch and the subject of movies came up, so 
I spoke up about it. And? It's not worth saying anything, Danielle. You just come across condemning and you make enemies real quick. Well, what'd they say? Well, nothing really. It's just a subject matter where you can't win. I mean, don't try to tell people what they can or cannot watch, and don't try to convict anybody. David Williams. I'm surprised to hear this from you. What? I'm just saying that people can't receive it, so why try? So why try? You received it when Mr. Odom told you. Yeah, I guess. It's just hard. So does this mean you're not gonna do the radio ads now? Doesn't look like it. God hasn't allowed anyone to step forward with the money, so without that, I don't do them. He just did. Don't ever be ashamed to speak up about Jesus Christ. He wasn't ashamed when he died on that cross for you. Now, I think it's time we shared the gospel with as many people in this city who will listen. Ms. Summers, David Williams. Do you remember me? I have a very good memory, Mr. Williams. Well, we're about to run our ad, and I wanted to ask you if you consider coming down on your price. What did I tell you before? Well, you said $1,500, ma'am. Well, that price still stands. I haven't changed my mind. Like I mentioned before, I have a limited funds, and if you could possibly lower your price, I'd be most appreciative. $1,500, Mr. Williams. But that's five times your normal rate. I only want to air this ad one time on your station. It'll be 2,000 if you want to keep negotiating. Thanks for calling the one. Just a moment. You're not really planning on spending this much money to air your ad, are you? Why? Because it's important. Very important. You must really think you're right. I believe the message in the Bible is right. But people in different countries believe in different things. I mean, who's to say who's right and who's wrong? They could all be right. There can only be one God. The Bible says that the Lord is God. For your religion, the Bible works for you. But for other people's religion, they have their own books that work for them. Every religion in the world teaches that man has to do something to get to God. But in Christianity, God did something to get to man. There's a big difference. Thank you for all your help. All right, this may seem a little primitive, but it's the best I can offer. Now, we use these phones from time to time during the year for call-ins. Well, how many phones do you have? 20. You think that'll work for you? Yeah, that should be fine. Well, speaking of work, how does it? Well, give me your phone, I'll show you. Hello? Can you hear me all right? Right. Hold on the line, and we'll call the same number again. Hello? Can you hear me all right? Yes. If all the lines are busy, voicemail puts them on hold. Plus, it's a toll-free number. And I've already talked to the owner. He said the calls are all on us, so there's no charge. Really? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much, Randy. This will be great. All right, let's go cut that spot. OK, David, you know what you're going to say? Um, sort of. Do you have your copy written out? Well, I, I wrote down a few things. 
Uh, David, when we sit down to do a commercial, we usually have everything written out. Well, I was just gonna sort of speak from the heart. Okay, say testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Okay, just sit there, talk in your normal voice. I'll give you a signal when you have 15 seconds left, and then I'll count you down from five. All right. You ready? Ready. I counted 37 people so far. Now, that's not gonna break any box office records, but for the first movie, not so bad. I think it's great. People like what they see, they'll tell others. Hey, we do this once a month. We could really build a good ministry here. I'm with you, man. Thanks for coming. We'll just have a seat anywhere. The movie's about to start. Hey, Justin. What made you decide to come? Because what you said was right, man. Going back and forth in between houses. It's been tough. Yes? Mr. David Williams is here to see you. Who? David Williams, the guy with the religious ad. Oh, Stephanie, I'm so tired of this. Tell him no. He says he has the money. Here's the spot. I'd like to air this Thursday at 11.59 a.m. And here is the payment. Put it on the schedule. Okay. Oh, Miss Summers. What is it now? Thank you. What you working on? I am writing down steps to salvation with Bible verses. I figured we could put these by each phone and share with people when they called. That's a good idea. Hey, uh, we also need a few more people to help us answer phones. We got 20 of them. Now, I've already spoken to Reuben and Cindy, and they can help us. Randy's in, and you and I make five. I can start calling people. Thanks. Oh, and uh, we need a few more radios to help monitor the ads, just to make sure that they air. You know, Randy's got several of them, but we need a few more. OK, we need radios. Anything else? Yeah. Pray that God uses this. Hey man, this Thursday, 11.59 a.m. Be there by 11.45, don't be late. <laughs> What's playing? Some Bible that my buddy did. <laughs> we'll be there, man. I have someone coming from the office, too. Oh, thanks. We need the help. By the way, what's this ad read? Hey, Charlie, you got that CD for the religious ad? I need it for tomorrow. Oh, it's here somewhere. Thanks. Can you believe he paid 1500 bucks to air this thing? You know, what's he gonna do, change the world in 60 seconds? Stephanie, run the ad at 11.54. Pardon? That ad, run it at 11.54. But he paid to have it air at 11.59. I said 11.54. But Charlie, do we have a contract with him? 
No. Did we sign anything? No. 11.54. Randy, how's it going? David, going good. All right, we're all set. I've got these radios set to the 16 stations, so we know we're on the air. I'm gonna need your help to check them all when the ad plays. You got it. Well, how about the phones? The phones are good, too. I've already left a message on the voicemail, just in case. Do you have enough people coming to help you tomorrow? Well, yes. Well, some. Danielle got someone to cover her lunch. Uh, Reuben and Cindy are coming. Uh, we're just trying to get a few more. Sounds good. It's a big day tomorrow. Gospel minute. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Come on, let me show you how to check these radios. $3,075 of our savings on one 60-second commercial. It's going to air on 16 radio stations tomorrow. We're not trying to sell anything. We're not going to make a penny from this. <laughs> Sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? Yes, it does, Mr. Williams. And you're married to the man who made that business transaction? Yes, I am, Mr. Williams. I might not get one phone call. That could be, Mr. Williams. I just want to reach one soul for Christ. In honor, Mr. Odom. And that's why I love you, Mr. Williams. Do we know if anybody else is coming? Yes, there should be two more. No, make that three. Okay, good. Hey, you know how many phones we need yet? Uh, not exactly. We think maybe 13, 14. All right, well, I'll just set up for whoever comes. so she went home. Hey, Frank, switch the time on that religious ad to 11.59. David, two minutes. Okay, everybody, listen up. I'd like to explain what's going to happen here. At 11.59 a.m., all 16 radio stations in the listening area will be playing a 60-second announcement sharing the gospel. At the end of the ad, a phone number will be given. If your phone rings, I'd like for you to answer, Jesus loves you, this is David, or whatever your name is. Next to each phone, there is a sheet. I've written down some Bible verses to help you. I also have a list of good churches you can suggest around the city. I try to tell them about one near where they live, if you can. 
I also have a place to get their name and their phone number if they want to give it to you. Now, we're not trying to talk anybody into anything. This is not a numbers game. I want this to be all God. He has to draw people to himself. So, just listen to the need on the other line and answer appropriately. Any questions? Okay, I want to thank everyone for helping out today. And I have to admit, I don't think I've been any more nervous in my whole life. 30 seconds. Okay. Here we go. In the Bible, Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the true vine. I am the resurrection. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. It also says that God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And lastly, the Bible says, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you need help in understanding who Jesus Christ is and what he did for you, please give us a call at 800-555-7500. That's 800-555-7500. The call is free. Thanks for listening, and God bless you. All mine aired. Mine too. Lord bless your word that just went forth. Jesus loves you. This is David. I heard this message on the radio, and I really feel guilty about a lot of bad things I've done. I, I, I need help. Can you help me? Yes, sir. Jesus Christ can help you. He absolutely can help you. Jesus loves you. This is Danielle. Yes, I can tell you about Jesus Christ, certainly. Jesus loves you, this is Randy. Absolutely. Jesus loves you, this is Ruben. Yeah, you got the right place. Jesus loves you, this is Cindy. Jesus yes. loves you, this is Scott. to confess and realize that you're a sinner. And we're all sinners. But the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We can't get to heaven on our own or by our good works. Our sin is in the way. That's why we need Jesus. He offered himself as a sacrifice for our sins. We believe in Jesus by faith. And the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right now you can pray and ask Jesus to forgive your sins, to come into your life and to save you. Would you like to do that? God bless you. 
God bless you very much. Jesus loves you. This is David. Hello, this is David. Can I help you? Well, I'll just stay on the line. We're here to help you if we can. I'd like to know more about Jesus. I think I need him. We all need him. We all need Jesus. More than anything. 